huge, uh, huge win. Um, very challenging, uh, challenging game. Um, you know, they jumped out ahead of us, and uh, we had uh, had our back against the wall a little bit early, but our kids uh, grinded through it, and you know, it's a huge win for us. Um, every win is uh, obviously important, but. When you play a team like Tech, who's just like viciously competitive, and I mean viciously competitive, and they get you down a little bit, um, you just try to hang in, hang in with it, and that's what we did. And and our guys, um, you know, Tech's got a really good scheme, and and you know, Will Ark has been their quarterback now for seven years. I don't know how they're pulling that off. I think it should be illegal through NCA. I'm joking, but he's been there four years, you know. He uh, he's just gritty and and he's always been good against us and and uh, you know Darius Willis is a really good receiver and and so they threw some stuff at us um, and uh, we adapted and hung in there and, and won the game. You guys were down ten to seven going into halftime. What was the message to the team to kind of get them going in that third quarter? Um, just stick with the process, you know. Like I was happy that. That it was only 10 to 7, you know, like we uh, struggled a little bit with rhythm on offense. They played uh, a four man front. We anticipated a three man front. These teams, there should be a rule that you got to declare what, what you're going to play before they, uh, before they show up because these teams are throwing a lot of curveballs at us. But, but uh, and then, you know, obviously Malik didn't play and then. Uh, um, Evan had a little injury, and so Roland Carson Galker, redshirt freshman from Zeeland West, and uh, you know, with the exception of maybe one big mistake, <laughs> um, he played really well. So really proud of him. Question for you, Carson. You started that second half after sitting in the first half. How did you manage to get the team going in the third quarter? Uh, I just I just trusted everyone to do their job. I mean, Evan was over there on the sideline in my ear helping me out to, to succeed, and uh, I guess we just we just put our trust in each other. You threw a pick six in the fourth quarter, and the very next offensive play, you threw an absolute dime to Tyrese for a touchdown. What was your mentality? Did you kind of have a next play mentality after throwing that pick six? Yeah, I was coming to the sideline. I had a lot of people just telling me to keep my head up. You're going to be all right, and uh, I guess next play, and I was ready, so. One thing Carson won't be is, like, the moment's not going to be too big for him. And uh, so he's going to make mistakes. He's got, like, a live arm, and he's got a good, good, uh, you know, good feel for, for the pass game. But it's like a foreign language in regards to all the stuff that he's got to look at because uh, he threw the ball. I think he was four-year starter at Zeeland West and threw the ball. 12 times the whole his whole career so so it shall it tell so Ian in the second half you guys were able this to this is not Ian by the way this is Javon Bayless sorry Ian Ian doesn't Ian uh, doesn't like to talk much so got you well they tricked me then yeah so either way in the second half slowed down Michigan Tech's passing offense what adjustments did you guys make at halftime to slow them down um I mean, I don't feel like we really made any adjustments besides trusting each other, uh, telling each other, just do your job. And as long as we all do our job, everything's going to get done the way we want it. So we just keep fighting. Um, there's nothing to that besides we all keep fighting. We won't stop until we keep winning. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I feel. Yeah. Javon, you talk about Michigan Tech being a team that doesn't stop fighting. Right, you stop fighting. They didn't stop fighting either. Right. I think it's just pure heart for a lot of us, our players. Um, personally speaking, for me, I got a lot of heart for this game, but I know the, the guys that are on the field with me got the same amount of heart to keep going no matter what situation we're in. Uh, I mean, starting from last week, we're not going to let off the pedal. We're going to keep fighting for the goal we want, and we're not going to let go of that goal. Javon, can you just talk about, again, at the very end of your play of the defense, it seems like every time when you guys have to you know, step up, stopping them, preventing them from getting a touchdown at the end and stopping them at the final drive and just talk about your play at the very end to preserve this win. Um, I feel like every play is, every play is important. Um, we just stepped up and made those important plays at the end. 
when they needed to be happen. So uh, speaking on that, I, I don't know what else to say besides we're, we're, we're gritty, we're hard workers, we're gonna keep fighting. And I wouldn't play with anybody else besides the dudes on the field with me at this time. You guys had 12 penalties for 126 yards today. How did you manage to overcome them and secure the victory today? I don't know. I, I have no idea. I, uh, that's two, two games in a row now where teams like this team threw it uh, 50 times. And last week, I think, 27. So that's 77 passes. Zero holding penalties, zero. So these guys must, uh, you know, these offensive linemen from uh, the last two opponents, it just like must be extraordinarily good at never holding. And so uh, I'm very, you know, I'm very impressed by how uh, how good they are at just not holding. So uh, I don't know what more to say. I mean, I don't know if you get sarcasm in my tone or what the heck's going on in my tone. Um, but it's mildly confusing for me. And I've done this a little bit, a little bit of time, so mildly confusing. Today we were retired at Ferris State legend and Jason Vanderlyn. How special was that moment for you? Oh my gosh. So I say this, you know, uh, everybody says, wow, Anise and his staff, boy, did they turn Ferris State around. If I didn't have Jason Vanderlaan, I could be sitting here right now suffering through a, a challenging year. Um, and, and this guy reminds me a lot of Jason. That's big shoes, by the way. But uh, um, Jason, Lamp, Zim, like they just like, I mean, we, we got here and they just like took it to the next level, man. And, and maybe I gave them and my coaches gave them this much inspiration but they took whatever little inspiration we had to give them, and they took it like to an extraordinarily high level, like unbelievable work ethic, unbelievable commitment to, to trying to be the best. And, and so that, this program got basically uh, turned by Jason and, and a couple of his buddies, just completely and utterly turned. And, and uh, so the last time Tech was here, actually, uh, their head coach mentioned this too, but last time they were here was 2015, and in the second half, uh, their D coordinator said, in the second half, uh, you just ran Jason the whole second half to win that game. And I said, yeah, uh, you know, Jason came in at halftime and said, just let me run the ball. And I said, well, don't fumble it then, and, and we'll be good. And, and their coach said, uh, their D coordinator said, yeah, I carried it 32 uh, times that day. So. Yeah, we we didn't have a lot of uh, a lot of like dynamic offense back then. It was Jason. There's 11 defenders. I don't know if anybody's gonna block for you, but see what you can get. And that's and he got a lot. So obviously, to be the leading rusher in the history of uh, college football for a quarterback is obviously a great feat. Carson, after losing to Grand Valley last week, how big was the win today for the mentality as you guys go forward? It's just good for us to get back to that winning mentality. Like coming off a loss, we just kept our spirits high in practice all week, and I, it's just good for us moving forward, I guess.